Hi, Gary Stearman with another Prophecy in the News daily update, the 24th of February, a Friday. And I want to thank Mike Hoggard for sharing some time with us. Of course, you've been seeing him uh, on uh, our updates for the last three days. Today, we're going to get back to looking at news around the world, specifically as uh, connected to the Middle East. And I want to make a statement uh, about uh, a few emails I've received to the effect that some of the news sources I'm quoting may not be uh, all that reliable, uh, like Arut Sheva or like Debka File or Yediot Aharonot being Middle East news sources. Some people say they're biased. You shouldn't be quoting them. They have a, an ax to grind. But uh, I read a composite uh, grouping of news stories. As you will see, I have several right here uh, today. And they're, they're all focused in on the same thing, and that is Syria. And we've been reading prophecies about Syria for a long time, but there's one that really strikes me over and over again, and it's from Jeremiah 49 concerning Damascus. Jeremiah 49, 23. It says, concerning Damascus, Hamath is, is confounded, and Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings, they are faint-hearted, there is sorrow on the sea, it cannot be quiet. Uh, when you see uh, in a prophecy, <clears throat> excuse me, a picture of a roiling ocean or a sea, uh, it is symbolic of a people in an uproar, or peoples in general, in a state of, uh, of uproar. And that's precisely what's happening in the Middle East, centered around Syria. You have uh, the Islamic Brotherhood on one side, you have Israel on the other side. The United States, of course, has a stake in what's going on there. Now, to continue in verse 24, it says, Damascus is waxed feeble, and turneth herself to flee, and fear hath seized upon her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. And of course, that's specifically latter-day... Uh, contextual prophecy. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? In other words, the city of Damascus, in agreement with Isaiah 17, Jeremiah is saying the city of Damascus is gone, just disappeared, wiped out. And I hate to say that. I don't wish this on anyone, but there are a number of prophecies that suggest some really catastrophic things are going to be happening uh, in the Middle East in the context of the latter days. Uh, Damascus called the city of my praise. Uh, Damascus for 4,000 years has been a, a, a central point in, in the Middle East, a, a wonderful city. Uh, we remember the stories about Paul and the city of Damascus. and. And uh, it figured prominently in, in much of what was happening in the first century. Verse 26, Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets, and the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it, it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. By the way, if you, uh, if you look at Damascus today, just look at a map. You could Google map Damascus. Uh, and, and get an aerial view of the city of Damascus. The palaces of Ben-Hadad and the old municipal city wall are still intact as they have been for hundreds and thousands of years. But this prophecy says they're going to be uh, knocked down. We have uh, a number of news sources coming out of the Middle East relative to Damascus. Uh, this from World Net Daily and uh, by Michael Malouf. Uh, it was uh, uh, produced around the 16th of February. Dateline Washington, Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta believes that Israel could attack Iran in the April to June time frame. Uh, and there apparently has been a decision made for the U.S. to help an assault on the radical Islamic nation's nuclear facilities, which places the United States on a direct line <coughs> from the Mediterranean coast inland uh, across Syria and Iraq, all the way to Tehran. <clears throat> In the same context, uh, on February 16th, this uh, from uh, Israel Today, quoting the Jerusalem Post. The Jerusalem Post reported on Thursday, that's February 16th, that there's a growing concern in the Israel army that the Syrian dictator Bashar Assad could attack the Jewish state as pressure mounts for him to step down. So you have 
two news releases. One, U.S. Uh, is preparing for an Iran operation. Number two, you have here Bashar Assad contemplating an, an attack on Israel if the pressure mounts. Uh, here's the second paragraph. Assad is currently facing a revolution in his own country that he has sought to quell with brutal military force. And, of course, that's old news to you if you've been watching these updates. Uh, those bloody tactics have resulted in a good portion of the Syrian army joining the opposition, and Syria is nearing the point of full-scale civil war. The situation has prompted the Arab League and Western powers to consider injecting their own military forces into Syria with the aim of ending Assad's rule. But before that happens, Israeli military officials believe Assad would lash out at Israel, both to divert Arab attention on Syria's internal struggle and to establish a lasting legacy for itself. And so you have uh, lines of force being developed focused on Damascus. Uh, the uh, celebrated uh, columnist Charles Krauthammer uh, referred to a Washington Post column in which David Ignatius uh, generally indicated that when Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta uh, talked about an attack in that region he focused on the months of April, May, and June, quote, our own Secretary of Defense has said that it's highly likely, and he gave the time frame, April, May, June, which means the Israelis think that the moment, the zone of immunity when they can no longer attack successfully is approaching. So the Israelis are being squeezed into a tiny little time frame in which they will lose the opportunity to attack Iran, and also they are being squeezed from the other direction uh, because uh, Bashar Assad, under duress and under siege, has threatened to lash out at Israel. Imagine Israel's military planners right now, caught between uh, these two very dramatic situations. And finally, from the New York Times, and we think of the New York Times as an extremely liberal uh, news outlet, but I'm, I have here a... Uh, 17-page printout, and I'm not, of course, going to have time to read all 17 pages, but we have statements quoted in this article from the New York Times that Israel can, at the moment, attack and cause uh, severe damage to Iran's nuclear sites and bring about a major delay in the Iranian nuclear project, but not for long. Number two, the question, does Israel have overt or tacit support, particularly from America, for carrying out such an attack? Yeah. The answer to that, according to the writers in the New York Times article, is yes. Number three, have all other possibilities for the containment of Iran's nuclear threat been exhausted, bringing Israel to the point of last resort? If so, is this the last opportunity for Israel to attack Iran? And the answer to that question, according to the writers in the New York Times, yes. For the first time, they say, since the Iranian nuclear threat emerged in the mid-1990s, the answer to all three of these questions is yes. Does Israel have the ability to cause severe damage? Yes. Does Israel have overt or tacit support? Yes. Have all other possibilities for the containment of Iran's nuclear threat been exhausted? Yes. And the New York Times concludes, and if you were to read all 17 pages as I have, that Israel will indeed must attack Iran. And all of this occurs in the context of the destabilization of Syria, specifically Damascus. And if Damascus were to explode, that is to say, if th the things that are prophesied for Damascus came to pass, uh, there is literally no way to predict what would come next. Uh, because all pretext 
and all politics would come to an end at that point, and, and it would become a shooting match, which is exactly what the Old Testament prophets have said. Damascus, well, she's waxed feeble. Next verse says, How is the city of praise not left? Damascus completely wiped out. That has to happen at some point. And of course, I've said many times, Damascus has been around for 4,000 years as a city, and this prophecy has never, ever been fulfilled. Not yet. And of course, we're going to be continuing to watch. Hope you do too. And uh, continue to watch prophecy in the news. We've got a, a, a number of very interesting things planned for the near future. Gary Stearman, have a great day in the Lord, and keep looking up.